Hello, my name is Rick Huddleston and I'm a consultant for DWD Technology Group and today I just wanted to talk about some of the changes in SAGE 100 2022 that has been recently released <clears throat> and primarily as it uh, applies to production management. Most of the changes that SAGE did in 2022 were for production management. So in general, uh, work order is no longer available uh, in 2022. <clears throat> Everyone must convert to production management uh, when you're upgrading to Sage 2022. Uh, during the upgrade process, it will automatically replace work order with production management. And it will convert either your work order data or your existing production management data to the latest version of production management. If you are still using or using MRP, you can stay on work order. This is the one exception. Um, but we would need to get special keys from Sage. And actually, the installation process and the rules governing the use of work order have yet to be determined at this time. IRP is still in development and it will come out later this year in a subsequent update to uh, 2022. So even though you had IRP in previous versions, it is not available at this time. And again, production management and work order cannot coexist in the same install. Uh, previously, you would have access to a work order history inquiry, but with the ability now to convert work order history um, work order is no longer available. And the license, manufacturing licensing has not changed. Um, with production management, it is a separate license. For those of you who get into behind the scenes and look at some of the tables when you're writing reports uh, and that type of thing, you will notice that all of the module code has been changed from JT to production management. JT was left over that Skanko had used uh, prior to 2022, and now we they have changed it to production or to PM for production management. And like I said before, it does have the ability to convert uh, both from work order and uh, prior existing production management installs. The one nice thing, two nice things that they've added was uh, in prior versions, if your router did not have the beginning step of 000, we had to jump through some hoops and manually create those uh, in the router tables before we could actually do the conversion. Now, if that's not there, the conversion process will automatically add or create that step 000 for you because that is a requirement in production management that uh, the templates, which were previously the routers, have step 000 as the first step of a template. And uh, as we mentioned before, it will now convert work order history to uh, production management. Uh, that goes along with the fact that work order is no longer available. In prior versions, it did not convert work order history into production management. You can see here in changes in role maintenance, basically in their effort to standardize the different modules, uh, it even got down into role maintenance that now they went in, uh, much like in all of the other modules, you can see um, they have added uh, different security features in the roles so that you uh, are standardized. And so those are some of the new ones. They renamed some of the ones um, that previously existed, allow full access to labor entry, which was previously labor entry administrator. Uh, it allow, allow user to overwrite parent quantity after work ticket is released. Uh, previously, it was allow parent quantity order changes after work ticket release. And third, there was a allow user to overwrite earnings code during labor entry um, in role maintenance for security purposes. And now that one was previously access earnings code in labor entry. 
So now also in an effort to give users the Sage 100 experience, they have added new visual process flows. And so I'm gonna just scoot 2020, 20, 2022 over and let's just go take a look real quick at some of the ones that they have added. If we go to visual process flows and you can see that the work ticket management process flow is up and it's showing, but what they actually added was the work ticket management process flow, the complete work ticket process flow. And the closed work ticket process flow. These were not available in versions prior to 2022. So I will be scooting 2022 and 2020 over for you to see when, so that we can see some of these new features uh, as we go along here. In the first one, we're going to go look at the changes in production management setup options. They added the option to integrate with GL and they changed the default to retain work ticket history from two to five years. Uh, that is a that's just a default. Typically, people will uh, modify it to whatever they want. And then on the entry tab, they added the option to enable or disable dynamic materials. That feature, which is a nice feature in production management, but that feature before was automatically added. Uh, some people like it, some people don't. So now we have the ability to turn it on, turn it off. And so let's just go take a quick look. If we go to production management and we go to the setup tab, production management setup tab, and as we mentioned before, they have added the general ledger integrate and the, uh, the default to change to five, which you can change if you want to, but on the entry tab, you can see here that they have added dynamic materials and you can turn that on or off. If we take a quick look over at 2020, which you can tell by the blue versus the white with green standard Sage screen. Uh, if we look at the setup tab for production management options, you can see that integrate with GL uh, was not available and the fact that they also did not have the enable dynamic materials available to you. So let's just pull that back and let's just take a look at some of the others. Work ticket <clears throat> templates. So they did make some changes in work ticket templates. And we'll just take a quick look here at the work ticket template maintenance and the changes that they have made. If you go into work ticket template maintenance, and if we pull up a template, you can see on the materials tab, They've added two standard features that you will find in most of the other data entry screens that uh, that involve inventory items. They've added the, AD, the alias items button, which was not there before. And they've also added the item inquiry that was not there before. So that if you are using the materials tab of your templates, so those are a couple nice features that it added. Also, if you go look at the attachments tab, in 20, let's go look at the 2020 version of the work ticket template. And you can see here, it does not have the alias items and it doesn't have the item inquiry available to you. If you go to the attachments tab, you can see prior that when you wanted to add an attachment, 
uh, you the information to add it, the description, the file location, it was all at the bottom of the screen. In 2022, you can see it. Uh, that if you want to add an attachment, you're just going to click on this button right here and you're going to add your attachment so that it makes the screen much cleaner and it again, it standardizes it with some of the other setup screens that are available within Sage. Work ticket entry. Here's the one that I like the most because I when I've worked with users or even when I'm working with it I have found it's a little bit clunky to enter some work tickets in and now the pre previous version so we're just gonna set up a work ticket for uh, our trusty old desktop 100 And we'll just say we're going to build one. We're not going to have any scrap on this one. So previously, as we set up the work ticket, you see we put in the item code quantity. We had to make sure our work ticket class is there. But to go from here, if we want to pull in the what is now the template, formerly the router, and the bill of materials so that we get our materials listed we had to go to the copy from button select our select where we're copying it from bill of materials uh, a template work ticket closed work ticket that type of thing so we would hit accept now we need to choose our option we would hit ok and then it would populate our steps and our materials tab but we always had to pull that information in. You always had to go to the copy from tab to get uh, to the next step and to fill out your work ticket. Let's go take a look at how much easier it is in 2022. If we go to our work ticket entry. a new number and again we'll go build our desktop 100 and let's select our option that is required let's say we, we are going to build one one of the changes is that you can change the unit of measure for the parent item. So that's one change that they have put in. Well, again, we're not going to create any scraps, so let's just say we're building one. Now, the big change before, it brings in the template that's assigned to this item's bill of material. And it gives you this information, the parent warehouse, materials warehouse, and what template it's going to use to pull in the items from the bill of material and what templates it's going to use to create your steps. So if you click over to the steps, you can see that it automatically comes in. If you go to your materials, again, it pulls everything in from your bill of material and you go to your totals and now you can just hit accept. You do not have to use that copy from button whatsoever. Um, it is totally We'll just do this. The copy from button now only pertains if you want to copy it from an existing work ticket, whether it's in history or open. So that's one nice change. I think it's easier and more intuitive just to uh, go through the accept process, jumping from tab to tab, than it is to go to your copied from button to have to copy that information in. One of the other changes that's that Sage made was before you could see the more button if you would click on the more button it only the only thing that it would take you to is attachments in 2022 it's just called attachments there is no more more button and so that's nice uh, 
previously, you did not have the ability. Again, we're jumping blue is 2020. Uh, you did not have the ability to attach a memo to a work ticket. So again, in their effort to standardize, you can see here that the work ticket or the memo function, which you find all over Sage, whether it's in data entry screens or setup screens, um, you have the ability to add a memo to your work ticket. So let's go there. The last thing, as far as when we are processing uh, a work ticket labor transaction, let's go take a look at it in 2020. So in 2020, if you went into labor entry, you can see that you had to select a specific transaction type. <clears throat> and then you would have to go through and you could se select that specific transaction type. You would fill out your employee, uh, your work ticket, your step, but you would have to do this multiple times. So you're creating entry. And it's, it's very redundant to create all the different entries for for those employees uh, as you put in your time. They have streamlined it in 2022. If we go to labor entry, you will see that now you can do multiple uh, transaction types, uh, multiple employees, and multiple work tickets and steps all in one data entry screen so that you don't have to jump back and forth through multiple entries. You can do it all in one screen, which is very nice. It, it's added, uh, it definitely streams lighting and uh, cuts down on your data entry time. So we have went through some of the major changes from 20, from prior versions of production management to what they moved to in 2022. Uh, I would like to thank you for uh, taking the time to look at it and hopefully um, you will have a more informed decision as we move forward to 2022. Thank you.